Hey physics kids, let's get ready for tomorrow's test. So first of all, the first question is, what are the six types of simple machines? First one is a lever, a plank on a fulcrum. Three types of levers. The first one is if you're pushing down on something and there's a heavy box there and the fulcrum is right in the middle. That's a first class lever. Second class lever, you've got a board, you've got a fulcrum, you've got something heavy here and you're lifting up on that. That's a second class lever. A good example of that would be like a wheelbarrow. Third class lever would be if you've got a board, your fulcrum, the pivot point is over there, and you're actually going to pull around it, your heavy object is here. And that's gonna cause like a swiveling action. So that's our first type of simple machine is the lever. Second one is a pulley, is simply a wheel with a groove. Hopefully you can figure out what that's supposed to be. Third one is a screw. And a screw is a type of inclined plane. That is in a spiral. And that looks something like that is a spiraling action. And that's an inclined plane that draws things upward. Then we have a wheel and axle. And a wheel and axle is simply a round object usually, like a wooden dowel or a pipe, the metal axle in your car, and that is going through a wheel. And when this turns, it allows something to be drawn up along the axle. So if we had a rope wound around, that would help maybe draw up a bucket of water from a well or maybe a winch, things like that. So that's a wheel and axle. Then we have an inclined plane, otherwise known as a ramp. And then last but not least is the wedge. And a wedge is just a really short inclined plane and that can be used to lift or separate or split, but only for a short distance. Good example of that, like we mentioned, would be like shoving a wedge underneath the leg of a very heavy desk. There's my very heavy desk. So that would lift it up a little bit. And you're not exerting that much force because you're just putting the skinny side under and then kind of kicking it in. Another example would be like if you are cutting wood and here is a log of wood. There's some bark. And you stick a wedge into the wood like your ax. And what that does is it makes a narrow opening into a much wider opening, therefore splitting your block of wood. All right, second part is on electricity. What is electricity caused by? It is caused by a flow of electrons. Field of force, that is simply the region around a charged object. And that is determined by the power of that force and also the size of that force, or of that charged object, I'm sorry. What is electrostatic or static electricity? That is simply when charges are stationary. Comparing and contrasting dry and wet cell batteries, a dry cell battery has a paste or solid chemicals inside. It usually is not rechargeable. And a good example of that is just your normal Duracell batteries, those kinds of things. So things like AA batteries, D batteries, 9 volts, etc. Those are all dry cell. A wet cell battery has a liquid chemical component, very strong acids usually. They can be recharged quite easily in fact. And a good example of those would be like your car battery. And your car battery charges every time you drive it. How does a battery work? There's a chemical reaction. That chemical reaction, RxN is for reaction, 
That chemical reaction triggers a flow of electrons. That flow of electrons leave out the positive end. And then they flow back through the circuit. to the negative end of the battery. So if this is my battery, there's a little bump on that end. When I complete the circuit using a wire or anything else like that, the two chemicals mix. That causes a flow of electrons. Those electrons go out the positive end, and then they come back in through the negative end. What happens to the total charge if you add additional batteries in a series? They add up. So if I have a 9 volt, and another 9 volt, and another 9 volt, I would have a total of 27 volts. You increase the power, it doesn't stay the same. All right, in a circuit, the load is simply the device that uses power. That could be a bell, it could be a lamp, it could be a light, it doesn't matter, your iPod. So it's the device that uses power. The source would be like your battery, or your generator or your outlet, whatever it is. A switch is something that can turn power on and off. You can break a circuit, and then the path is usually the wire, the circuit board, etc., um, that the power will follow. So, in what direction does the current always run in the circuit? From positive to negative. So, here's my positive. It would go this way, and it would circle back to find the negative. What happens to the circuit if switch 3 is left open? So that would be right here. Alright, so if bulb G is burned out right here, that means that this circuit can't continue going around. So it can go here and back, all of those are fine. It can go here and back, all of those are fine. But F, it would get stuck the circuit can't complete, so F is the only one that won't turn on in this case. So if bulb G is burned out, A, B, C, D, and E all work. Here's a tricky one, if bulb A is burned out, so this works, it can go through, it gets stopped there, so nothing up here works, but we can still go through bulb B and complete everything else. So in this case, everything still works, B, C, D, E, F, and G will all work, just not bulb A, because burned out. If switch 4 is left open, where's my switch 4? Right here. If switch 4 is left open, this whole circuit can complete, but this circuit, you'd think, oh, it's going to dive down here. Well, it can't. This is open, but it can still keep going around. So the only one that actually doesn't work is E. So I can still use A, B, C, D, F, and G. All right, so voltage is simply the pressure pushing electrons through a current. And our unit for that is volts, capital V. Next up is the current, and the current is simply the number of electrons moving through the circuit per second. It is amps, capital A. Then we've got resistance, which is opposition or fighting against the flow of current. And the unit that we use for that is ohms, O-H-M-S, and we use this Greek omega for that. So it looks like an upside down horseshoe. What is Ohm's law? V equals I times R. Voltage equals current times resistance. One hundred and twenty volts, ten ohms. What do they want to know? They want to know the current. We cover that up to solve for current. It's going to be V over R. So here's my equation, I equals V over R. So now I can plug in my numbers. 
voltage was 120 volts. My R, my resistance, was 10 ohms. So if I do 120 divided by 10, my answer is 12. And what units do I use for current? Amps. Next one, I've got 120 volts, 5 amps. What do they want to know? They want to know the resistance. So I cover up the little R on my triangle for resistance. And that leaves me with resistance equals V divided by I. So I've got 120 volts divided by my current of 5 amps. 120 divided by 5 equals 24. And my units of resistance are ohms. You can also just write out ohms. Next one, what voltage is required to move 2 amps through 20 ohms of resistance? 2 amps, 20 ohms, and we are looking for voltage. So that is our original equation, V equals I times R. So all I have to do is I, 2 amps, times R, 20 ohms, 2 times 20 is 40, and my unit is volts. This is just a funny one I made up. It says that Ash is going to hook up Pikachu to his phone charger. So we're trying to figure out here, we've got current, 20 amps, resistance, 3 ohms. We're trying to figure out what's happening with the voltage. So V equals I times R. So V equals 20 times 3, which gives us 60 volts. And it says he needs 110 volts to charge his phone. Less does not produce a charge more will fry his phone. So what's going to happen? Ash's phone won't charge. Because we didn't actually produce enough volts. Or Pikachu. All right, so let's talk about magnets. A magnet is any object, whether it is naturally occurring or artificially created, that has a magnetic field. So let's contrast a bar magnet and electromagnets. So a bar magnet is permanent. It can't be turned on and off. Permanent. It has a north and south pole, just like all magnets do, where opposites attract. An electromagnet, it needs a supply of electricity. and the magnet can be turned on and off. All you gotta do is shut off the power. Next up, what are three ways that you can make a stronger electromagnet? Number one, you can wrap the wire around an iron core. Number two, you can add more wire. And number three, you can increase the current passing through that wire.